Well, I've been on the road for five minutes and next thing I'm on a ferry going across the Mighty Murray. It was drive up and straight on. A lovely Sunday morning, a bit cloudy, a bit cold, but here we go. Heading to another free camp. We're in uh, Wellington, South Australia. My first camp at Lake Barrenbeet, I had seen it before on a few posts and then it came up on free camps and I thought, yep, got to stay there. I was intending to do some gold prospecting around, but when I was getting up in the morning, it was minus four degrees. Just I couldn't get motivated to get out and yeah, I would have had to drive a bit anyway to get somewhere. So I would just want a few kilometers under the belt as well to get moving and um, get closer to the South Australian border. I stayed up Dimboola, free camp, uh, was, yeah, it was okay for a night. Um, don't think I'd want to stay there longer. I was going to go into the little desert and camp in there, but again, it was a bit off the road and I, I just didn't see a point of driving a few kilometres for the day and then moving on again. Serviston Reservoir was quite a nice place to stay, but I wouldn't want to go there if it's been raining. It'd be very slippery and wet and not pleasant. You need to be fully self-contained in there. There's no facilities apart from a picnic table. There is a pontoon. It does say no swimming though, so don't know what that's about. Um, so I've got a few nice photos there and yeah, it, it, I, I would stay there again, but it's just one of those secluded little spots just before the South Australia border. You still get traffic noise from the road, though, even if it's a you know half a kilometre off the road. I wanted to stop at Serviston. I was being conscientious and using up all my vegetables. In the end, I read, you know, you can take washed potatoes and you just got to um, take the tops off your carrots and could have taken them anyway. But um, tomatoes are classed as a fruit. So I had a, a bit of a fry up for breakfast with bacon and eggs and yum. And yeah, enjoyed that. Did the right thing. I even used up all my honey, which you don't need to going into South Australia. It's Western Australia. You need to do that. So anyway, could have, I could have spent probably a week just on that trip easy. Seeing some of their sites and their, like there's silos at one spot. There's a park that, you know, with sculptures and interesting stuff to look at. And yeah, I could have well easily taken a week or so to get to the border, but I was on a bit of a, a mission. I kind of felt a bit bittersweet going over the South Australian border. In a way, it was kind of a milestone. I've got out of Victoria, yay, but it um, means I'm further away from family as well. So, yeah, it was a bit, a uh, little bit emotional going across the border. Why? But I did have a stop there and um, took a little photo of the sign because uh, you have to. It was um, sort of a point of uh, this is the start of my holiday. Some of the roadside stops are just that. They're just a place to stop for the night to rest and recuperate and have a sleep. And there's a bit of traffic noise from the road. That'd be like the, the one in Tail and Bend. It was a bit close to the road and a bit of traffic noise. But there, there wasn't that much at night anyway. So it didn't really bother me too much. And it was a free camp. So <laughs> what do you expect? Some are good. Some are okay. And yeah, they're free. So yeah, just got to roll with it and make the best of it. So trying to make as um, many free camps as I can along the way, I guess. So just to keep the cost down and uh, I'm, I'm frugal. <laughs> yeah, why pay for accommodation when I'm fully self-contained? And that was the idea of getting this caravan behind me was to be self-sufficient, be able to go off grid and not be paying for caravan parks and camping spots when you don't need to. If you're wondering what app I'm using to find these free camps, I've got Campmate. I know a lot of people use Wikicamps, but Campmate seems to be doing okay for me. It's got um, 
water points, dump points, free camps, paid camps. It seems to have everything that I need, so why change? Better put the phone up because we're nearly to the other side already. No, and today's lesson is when you ask someone is there plenty of room to park the caravan and turn around and they say yes don't always go by it but I parked down behind me there yeah down there and yes I was able to park the caravan and turn around but it wasn't um, that easy uh, whereas just up here there's plenty of parking so yeah, make your own call I don't always go by what the people say. Time to hit the road. One of those places that I came across um, I'd never heard of was Malang uh, in South Australia. I was traveling between Tail and Bend and heading out to Point Sturt. Amazing. Took heaps of photos, um, some videos. It was windy, but the facilities there were good. There were toilets, covered areas. There was heaps of stuff. A lot of people camping there. I reckon I could have stayed there a few days if I'd uh, in that frame of mind. But the um, other thing I came across, just driving out, came up to the um, the train museum there. And I ended up spending a couple of hours there for, you know, it was really interesting. It's only open on Sundays, unfortunately, for, for those traveling. But um, yeah, it was just formative. The guys there were volunteers. They were just so knowledgeable and entertaining and and the food, oh, to, to about a burger was oh, delicious, R really nice. So it just sometimes you come across these spots and love them. I'd, I'd go back there in a heartbeat. So anyway, if you're ever in that area, stop in Malang. It's great. It'd be much nicer to have my wife beside me looking at these things and these places and, you know, maybe going to the op shop. And we tend to um, explore further away and not see our own backyard I guess and that's maybe a bit of a case of wanting to save that stuff for another day when I'm traveling with my beautiful wife. Cheers! <laughs> <laughs>